Hi everybody! In a previous video I derived the time dilation formula which says more or less that time is relative. Now here's the more precise sense in which it says that. The time dilation formula says that the so-called proper time, that's the time interval for a process which happens in a frame of reference in which the whole process happens at the same location, that time interval is different than the time interval as measured in another reference frame, moving at speed v relative to the first. So the duration of a process, the time duration of a process, depends upon the frame of reference in which you measure it. That's the sense in which time is relative. What I'm going to show you in this video is that if time is relative, space is also relative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to derive something known as the length contraction formula. All right, so here's our setup. Imagine I have two stars, A and B, which are at rest with respect to each other, so that they're in the same reference frame. And we're going to start by considering a frame of reference in which both these stars are at rest. We're going to consider the distance between them in this reference frame. We're going to call it L sub P. And I'm going to introduce a new definition. L sub P will be a special case of something known as a proper length or a rest length. The proper length is defined as the length of an object in a frame of reference in which the object is at rest. Now, you might say, well, there's no object connection connecting star A and star B, but we could imagine connecting star A and star B with a rod and measuring the length of that rod. Uh, in a frame of reference in which A and B are at rest, that rod would be at, last, at rest. So this length between A and B is at rest in this reference frame. So the length between A and B in the frame of reference in which A and B are at rest, uh, we're going to call the so-called proper length. Okay, so what I want to do is use the relationship distance equals speed times time to relate this length to the speed that the spaceship is moving between star A and star B. We're going to assume that the spaceship is moving from star A to star B at some constant speed V. So we want to relate basically this length to the speed and the time it takes a spaceship to travel that. Now, that seems very simple, but we have to be very careful with this relationship. This relationship is true for things moving at constant speed. It's basically a mathematical consequence of kinematics, definitions of uh, velocity, acceleration, and so forth, and the case of uh, constant velocity and straight line motion. All right, so this is basically math, but we need to make sure we're consistent with what we're using. The distance, the speed, and the time all need to be measured or considered in the same reference frame. I can't go mixing distances in one reference frame with times in another reference frame. That's not what this is intended to be. So the distance, the speed, and the time all have to be considered in the same reference frame. All right, so here we go. What I want to do is consider the distance that this spaceship travels uh, between star A and star B, the speed at which this spaceship travels uh, between star A and star B, and the time it takes the spaceship to get from star A to star B, all from the perspective of a reference frame uh, in which star A and star B are at rest. So basically you can imagine a coordinate system attached to star A. All right, well, the length in this reference frame in which star A and star B is at rest is just this thing that we called L sub P. The speed that the spaceship travels uh, from star A to star B is just the speed I've given V. And now we got to be careful with the time. The time I'm going to call delta T. Now we got to be really careful with our subscripts in special relativity. Um, I'm calling it delta T. It's not delta T sub P. Why is that? Because if you imagine the process, the process is uh, ship starts at star A, ship ends at star B. Which of those, which reference frame does that all happen at the same location? It's not the reference frame attached to star A in which A and B are at rest. The process begins with ship here, process ends with ship there. The beginning and end points of that process are at different locations in this reference frame, so we need to call this time, elapsed time for this process delta T. Now, according to the ship, this process will be delta T sub P, and I'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so we've got this written uh, all out in the, from the perspective of a reference frame in which A and B are at rest, so a reference frame attached to A or B. Let's now consider this whole process from the ship's frame of reference. From the perspective of the ship, 
what's happening. The ship's here. The interplanetary distance is zooming to the left past the ship. All right, there's some length between star A and star B, uh, and that whole length is going to the left. All right, so the beginning of the process, the ship corresponds with star A. The end of the process, the ship corresponds with star B. So the time for this process will be the so-called proper time. Because remember, the definition of the proper time is the time for a process in which the whole process happens at the same location. This process of the trip all happens at the ship according to the ship. Now let's consider the speed. This whole length is zooming past the ship with speed v to the left relative to the ship. How do I know it's the same speed? Well, basically, if the, speed, if the ship is moving to the right relative to the stars with speed v, the stars must be moving to the left uh, relative to the ship with the same speed. All right, so the speed is v. Now for the distance, the distance that is traveled by the length during this process is just the length. We've got one end corresponding with the ship at the beginning, we have the other end corresponding with the ship at the end, and we'll just put that in L. I'm calling it L instead of L sub P because it might be different. And that's what I'm trying to show is that it will be a different length. Okay, now we can do one more step. This delta T sub P is the elapsed time for this process in the ship's frame of reference. We can relate that to the elapsed time in the uh, star A and star B frame of reference by using the time dilation formula. All right, here's the time dilation formula. I can solve for the so-called proper time, and that's here. So I'm going to take this and plug it in for the proper time. Okay, so now let's look at this. This part right here, V times delta T, is the same thing as this here, V times delta T. But V times delta T is the so-called proper length, L sub P. And so we get that the length in this reference frame between star A and star B is the proper length in the other reference frame multiplied by this square root factor square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. This is the length contraction formula. All right, so the length contraction formula relates a length of some object or some thing in a frame of reference in which it's at rest to another frame of reference, to the length in another frame of reference in which the object is moving at speed v. Okay, so a few comments are in order. First, the proper length of an object is the longest length of that object that anyone is going to measure. Because this 1 minus v squared over c squared square root factor can be anything between 0 and 1. When the speed is 0, you get 1 minus 0 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, and you get that the length is equal to the proper length. But if, if the speed is 0, then you're talking about a reference frame that's basically identical to the original one. On the other hand, if the speed gets great, this factor gets ever greater, and you're subtracting something from 1. And so L will be equal to L sub P times something uh, less than 1 but greater than 0. So L will always be less than or equal to L sub P. Great. So the takeaway here is that in special relativity, uh, not only is time relative in some sense, but also lengths are relative in some sense. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.